Having the most powerful navy in the world is no easy task, and the British knew this when they ruled the Seven Seas. In order to maintain their maritime power all over the world, they had to build a vast network of coaling stations to keep their ships fueled and supplied at all times. As the U.S. became an undisputed naval superpower after World War II, it too needed a way to supply its massive ships in every corner of the ocean. As such, the U.S. Navy adopted the Replenishment at Sea Doctrine, a concept that had been vaguely explored as far back as the end of the 18th century. The risky endeavor entails a warship and a supply ship aligning perfectly as they cruise through the ocean. Both vessels need to maintain flawless communication and placement, immediately correcting any slight course deviation. Using tensioned cables, the supply ship delivers fuel and material supplies to the warship, which can continue operating according to its mission parameters. Due to its inherent risks, the process was deemed impossible for large capital ships, as analysts considered them too big to perform the constant and immediate maneuvers needed to keep the ships apart. Still, to the world's surprise, replenishment at sea has evolved dramatically, and recent fascinating footage shows how a massive U.S. carrier is being supplied on the go. Supply Issue For decades, any significant naval power in the world had to deal with the issue of supplying and refueling their ships while they were at sea. Before the Industrial Revolution, vessels were forced to return to a friendly port if they wished to replenish their stockpiles. But as steam-powered ships became the norm, food was not the only resource that needed to be refilled, as coal was also imperative. The British Empire managed to extend its navy across the globe by building wide networks of coaling stations, even in the most remote places. As such, the ships could quickly refuel without having to make an extended trip back to the main port. As successful as the scheme was, it wasn't without its considerable flaws. For one, the refueling stations were a prime target for enemy nations or pirate factions. Much later, during World War II, the Germans implemented a replenishment at sea tactic by using their infamous milk cows. The supply vessels would travel deep into the ocean and rendezvous with U-boats in the area, delivering vital resources so that the submarines could remain in combat service for more extended periods. Still, it also resulted in some severe vulnerabilities. The replenishing process was slow and cumbersome, as both ships had to be still and surfaced for several hours, leaving them utterly exposed to enemy attacks. As such, when America began expanding its navy across the world, it sought a safer and more reliable method of sea replenishment. Honing the Method Carefully aligning ships to connect them via cables and send supply boxes across the gap was not a new concept when the U.S. implemented it after World War I. As early as 1898, there were documented cases of a French ship resupplying two warships with over 200 tons of coal using a temporary transporter while both vessels moved at six knots. The U.S. Navy lacked such a system, so Spencer Miller and the Lidgerwood Manufacturing Company of New York adapted the process to use suspended cables instead. By the turn of the century, experiments with underway replenishment, or UNREP, had managed to transfer supplies at a speed of 19 tons per hour, a significant rate, but still way too slow to consider the technology viable. Interest in the technology plunged for a few years until it became clear that oil would be the future of warships. Pumping liquid fuel through a suspended hose was much safer, faster, and more reliable than transferring solid goods. Still, the technology was not commonly used until World War I. When the U.S. entered the war in 1917, it commissioned USS Maumee as the first underway refueling vessel. The tanker was stationed 300 miles off the coast of Greenland, and it would refuel U.S. destroyers on their way to Europe. Navies across the globe would then begin to invest in underwear replenishing systems during the interwar period. Still, it was a common belief that refueling large capital ships at sea was impossible due to the technical difficulties it represented. Then came Rear Admiral Nimitz, who conducted a series of meticulous tests that perfected the rigs and ship handling. 
The process could now be performed in vessels of any size for the first time in history. As such, the U.S. implemented a systematic refueling scheme in the Pacific. The U.S. carrier task forces became the first naval power able to stay at sea indefinitely, which gave them an overwhelming advantage over the Japanese Navy, even when the U.S. had to fight thousands of miles away from their naval bases. As the method gave the U.S. Navy an unprecedented operational range, it was zealously guarded as a secret during the war, so that no other nation would mimic it. Replenishment at Sea Replenishment at Sea, known as RAS today, is critical to U.S. Navy operations. During the 1960s, the service further developed the method to not just deliver fuel safely and swiftly, but also transfer ammunition and stores while on their way. Ships were fitted with a specialized transfer system using a rare tensioner that keeps the high line between the ships tensioned, allowing for a smooth transfer that detects even the slightest movement of the vessels. Currently, the technique has evolved into the standard tension replenishment alongside method, or stream, allowing any U.S. warship to be reliably replenished across the globe. As recent footage shows, the supplying ship takes a steady course and speed of about 20 miles per hour, allowing for better control of direction. The receiving ship then takes her place approximately 30 yards from the supplier, which must be kept at all times. A pneumatic line thrower is then fired from the supplier, which serves to pull across the messenger line. This line transfers several pieces of equipment, such as distance lines, phone lines, and transfer rig lines. The supply ship oversees all the transfer operations, commanding and directing both vessels during the process via an intricate orchestra of radio communications, telephone calls, visual signals, and strict protocol. Larger ships tend to set up multiple transfer rigs, allowing for faster delivery of various goods and supplies. Additionally, nearly all replenishment ships are set up to service two receivers simultaneously, with one replenished on each side. Meticulous Operation As straightforward and safe as the procedure looks, it is a hazardous task, even with the modern, refined process. The two ships sailing side by side at considerable speed must hold the same course and speed for hours at a time, and even the slightest deviation could result in a tragedy. The hydrodynamics of two ships sailing close together causes a suction effect in the space between them, which has to be actively compensated for at all times. A minor steering error on one of the ships could cause a devastating collision or sever the transfer lines and fuel hoses. At a speed of 12 knots, even a one degree variation in heading will generate a lateral velocity of around 20 feet per minute, and the crews would have seconds to react before a catastrophe unfolded. Moreover, when the replenishment is done in a large carrier, the risks grow, and margins of error shrink radically. As such, the crew has to be exceptionally well trained. As the footage shows, the seemingly unassuming task is a monumental endeavor for U.S. carrier personnel and something that defines their careers and that of the vessels they're handling. Thank you for watching our video. If you enjoyed this look at the U.S. Navy stream system, click on your screen and check out another of our Doc Documentaries channels, where we explore the most fascinating military events and the incredible wartime technology that made them possible. We publish new content regularly. So stay tuned.